Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Really? We went with my list? Yes. Woo! Yes. Yes. We went with your list. Woo! Woo! I'm the greatest champ coming through. I'm the well, it's not really winning. We just went with your list because it fits with the... Uh... I'm the greatest... I'm the greatest champ here. I'm the champ. Tom, you might need to. This is a story of Tom and the Fire Pit, the most beautiful list made with contempt and wit. Tom, (laughs) seriously, pay attention. The fight's about to begin. Wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah, the boxing gloves and the trunks didn't tip you off? When we picked your list, we were signed up for the Podcast Intramural Boxing League, part of the big, you know, Podcast Intramural Tournament. I thought we were done with podcast tournaments after the basketball fiasco. Ooh, callback. That's episode 41 where we watched Hoosiers to our listeners. But yeah, I still can't breathe right from that. <laughs> Look, your first fight is up against the SpongeBob SquarePants podcast. Yeah, the guy's like 50 pounds soaking wet. You'll be fine. Why me? Your list, man. Comes with the territory. Fighters, to your corner. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Guys, don't make me do this. Just keep your arms up. Remember, float like a bee and sting like a butterfly. I, mm, sure, Josh. Yeah, this is a sports-related journey. I'm just going to have to get used to this. (laughs) And the winner is Tom of the Fire Pit Podcast. Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, holy shit, guys! I feel great! That wasn't too bad! Hoo-hoo! No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That is not... That is not how these things work. Yeah, you're supposed to be terrible. We have a shtick. Yeah, my dad used to be big into kickboxing back in the day. Taught me how to fight pretty early on. True story. Never had a chance to use it until now. New season, new Tom! Woo! I'm the greatest! I'm pumped! That was awesome! When's the next fight? Now. What? Tom, go! Uh, Sounds like Tom's losing now. Order is restored. Good. I was getting bored. Right hook! Boom! And the winner is Tom of the Fire Pit Podcast with his second victory over the hentai boys. Okay, that was weird and a little handsy. I uh, have no idea what's going on right now. We have a formula! <sighs> okay, so uh, now a break. Break sounds like a good idea, then. And now in the red corner! Oh, god damn it! Weighing in at 245 pounds, the undefeated Bobby the Brick Wall Slaughter of the 10 Ton Boxing Podcast! <laughs> And in the blue corner, Tom! Uh, guys, can one of you say the thing now? Whose turn is it this week? Guys, it's kind of big. Are we doing this again? We're not supposed to rehash old jokes. Guys? No, 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 I'm, I'm serious. I, I, I honestly don't remember. Remember, we had the Shattered Order guys on last time we did this. That's episode 55, where we watched The Empire Strikes Back with GMP and Wink of the Shattered Order podcast. Seriously, guys? I think I was the last one to do it before then, so... Someone say it! I don't care who! Oh, jeez! Oh, God! Me? You? Me? You? you? Me? No, no, you. Me? No, 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 you. No, you. No, I insist. You. you. For the love of God! Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. and sliding into home with the classic Chadwick Boseman film about the legendary Jackie Robinson himself, 42! 
It's curveballs and clinch plays every Tuesday here at the Fire Pit. Let it all! Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to the Fire Pit. I'm Josh, the Cue Ball Reginald, and welcome to the start of our second journey of our second season. It's the twos. After the chaos and hostile takeover that was the last destination, it's time to get back to basics with some baseball as the fire pit strikes out towards 42. Well, first, we need to get through tonight's film. And as per our rules, we've taken an actor or an actress from the last film and moved them on over to this one. And now to give us a good idea of what we're watching and who we're watching, I'm going to let Tom throw that pitch. Thompson? Thank you, Josh. I'm Tom the editor, Thompson. And as mentioned, we watched James Earl Jones, or rather heard James Earl Jones as the voice of Darth Vader, as he told Mark Hamill that he was his daddy. Big stuff. Well, tonight we will see James Earl Jones play famous activist Malcolm X in 1977's The Greatest, a movie that also stars Muhammad Ali as himself. And also Ernest Borgnine, who is not going to be playing himself. This is a film documentary about famous charismatic boxer Muhammad Ali, obviously the greatest. But to give us a little more of a rundown of the film, I'm going to send a fastball over to Dan. Ah, I got it. I got it. Ah. Thank you, Tom. I'm Danny the Ray Gun Nigel. And as mentioned tonight, we're watching The Greatest, a documentary biopic drama of Muhammad Ali uh, starring Cassius Clay as Muhammad Ali. See what I did there? See? Yeah? Yeah? I get it? Cassius Clay as Muhammad Ali because he converted to is You know what? Never mind. Um, its release date was uh, 19 May of 1977. Running time of 101 minutes. Uh, had a, the best box office that I could find. Maybe Josh found more. Uh... 3.8 million in U.S. rentals. So I'm assuming that's video sales or video rental sales. Um, weird metric to gauge considering I don't think the VCR existed in its form that we think of in 1977. But it has a uh, Rotten Tomato score of 45%. That's only audience. There was no critic score on Rotten Tomato for this movie. And an IMDb of 6 out of 10. So we're approaching swashbuckler numbers. But uh, that's all I could really find on this movie. It's kind of a unknown film. I think we were joking in pre-production before we started recording that people have either forgotten about this movie or don't know about this movie, including the people that were in it, like Muhammad Ali and James Earl Jones and Ernest Borgnine. I don't know. I mean, it seems like it's an interesting film. Um but that's all I could really find. I do have some trivia on it if you guys are interested. But I, don't, I am. But I don't have much. I really don't. It's Like I said, this is not Star Wars. This is not uh, a Marvel movie. This is not something that's got a lot of like production stories and a lot of... Um, so what you're saying is after following up a two hour long episode, well, two weeks ago, we're going to have like a 45 minute episode. Mercifully, yes. You're welcome listeners but um i liked the long episode i did too it was a fun episode to record no no this is honestly this is a this is a good um breather episode i guess so if you want to think of it that way because you know we had a big season finale or you know not season mm -hmm. finale but big finale destination you know empire strikes back we had guests from another podcast on and it was fantastic and it was fun this is going to be our bottle episode ladies and gentlemen this is <laughs> This is going to be kind of a low key, low special effects uh, kind of an episode. Yeah, we do this episode so we can save the budget for the big finale at the end of the journey. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Lots of character building. Yes, this is a good character building episode. Tom cries when he gets beat up in the boxing ring. And maybe some provocative sex scenes. Yeah, we don't normally do those in bottle episodes. But don't you have sex with the bottle? What bottle episodes are you talking about? What bottle episodes are you talking about? Whoa, look at that. Whoa, there's a podcast we need to be recording. Oh. <laughs> okay. So uh, the only major trivia that I could find from this was uh, the song The Greatest Love of All was first introduced on the soundtrack for this movie by George Benson. It went on to become an international smash hit for Whitney Houston in the 80s. <laughs> so what? 30 <laughs> years later. 
Well, no, no, Three, this. Oh, 20 Three, years Three. later, excuse me. No, this movie is 1977, and Whitney Tom, Houston. Tom, it's three years from the 80s. Yeah, and it, the 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 greatest love of all was a hit for Whitney Houston, I think, in '86 or '87. So, ten years after this movie came out, Whitney oh. Houston, yeah, Whitney Houston covered it, and it was a big hit for her. I associate her with more than '90s, but wow, okay, I also don't know math. No, you don't know years. You're very bad with dates and times. Well, it's like for me, anything before the '80s is I sum up in the decades. It's like when did the Swashbuckler come out? The '70s. Same as the uh, Star Wars and uh, whatever movies came out in the 70s. Jaws, I think, came out in the 70s, too. So all three of those movies came out at the same time. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's really hard to sometimes like like associate movies or releases it, as being in the same point in time. Like, this movie's 1977. It came out at the same time, or around the same time as Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, it was released in May of 1977. And a lot of other movies yeah. too, which I'll which I'll be getting into with a little bit of my meta when yeah. we get there. Um, and speaking of this movie coming out in 1977, this was part of a cycle of ring fighter movies, mostly boxing movies. There was a few wrestling films, but this was mostly boxing movies. It was a response to the runaway box office and critical success, and Academy Award winning Best Picture boxing movie Rocky. Rocky came out in 1976. It was a huge hit. Very popular movie. Everyone loved it. Everyone started copying it, or at least coming out with their own boxing movies. This included. I really hope we get to that movie someday. I do too. I would love to get to any of the Rocky movies. Um, maybe except for five. (laughs) But uh, yeah, we can skip that one. But um, Rocky Two came out in seventy nine. The Champ in seventy nine again. The Main Event in seventy nine. Prize Fighter in seventy nine. Raging Bull nineteen eighty. Rocky Three was in nineteen eighty two. Um, there was a movie called Tough Enough came out in 83. Like there's a lot of like boxing movies that came out in the 70s and early 80s as a response to Rocky. And this is one of them. This is the one that got caught in that wave. And that's pretty much all I have for trivia. I Dang. like there's not much. Oh, Paul Winfield. He's in this movie. He plays the draft lawyer, not the NFL draft lawyer. People that the draft draft like you got drafted and had to go fight in war. Uh, this, remember, this movie takes place in the 70s. Paul Winfield goes on to play Don King in Muhammad Ali's promotion manager in the movie Tyson, which came out in 1995. I th- thought that was interesting because Don King is also heavily associated with the boxing world because he was Mike Tyson's manager for a long time. So nice. He's cool. Yeah, that's all I really have, though. I don't really have a whole lot else. Like I said, trivia on this was kind of hard to find. I mean, that may not be such a bad thing. I mean, if there's no drama, it means at least the movie probably went well enough otherwise you would have found something about it yeah i mean i couldn't find anything about production mishaps or you know ernest borgnine and muhammad ali got in a punching match which i'm almost positive muhammad ali would have won if that actually happened uh uh, no none of those kinds of stories I, i couldn't find them i'm not saying they didn't exist and there wasn't any kind of a any drama on set but if there was it never got published i don't think much about this movie got published no because i was going to ask you did do you have better success than me finding anything on the box office oh yeah of course i did i mean i know how much like, you love digging lo- through the 70s to find numbers for tickets mm-hmm. oh dude it's it's insanely odd this one uh, amazingly enough I, it was really easy it came right up when i searched for it um obviously it's about a young kid who's from the Outer Rim, who's going out and eventually makes his way to become the most powerful starfighter in the galaxy. That's Star Wars, 1977. Came out around the same time as this movie, but you're way off. Well, I googled the greatest 1977, and this was the first thing that That was the greatest film that came out in 1977. (laughs) Oh, shit. Okay, hang on. Um, Typing sounds. All right, here we go. Uh, This movie uh, came out in... um, 2017 starring Hugh Jackman. Oh. Uh um, oh wait, 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 Josh. Already I think you're thinking of the greatest showman. Oh, the great yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. You said this we've been talking about 70s. I guess I was kind of confused when it came out in 2017. Yeah. I just thought I misheard you. Um Yeah, I got nothing. But I guess I will before I segue, I'll put in that little bit on the side here. Anything before the nineteen eighty three for box office numbers is terrible to find unless it's a big name movie. But uh, yeah, so this movie is so obscure. Thank you, Tom. That um, yeah, I couldn't find any information on it, no matter how hard I really tried. So 
Well, you said in previous episodes he didn't record it unless it was a major hit. So Mm -hmm. we already can tell based on that how it probably did in the box office. Yeah, I even pulled up the numbers for 1977. There's only 35 movies recorded for 1977 the lowest of them <laughs> 33 of them are star wars it just repeated it 33 times <laughs> yeah the the lowest movie called fraternity row made two hundred and ninety thousand dollars. so the greatest isn't even on this list <laughs> these are all movie tickets of people that bought movies that were drunk and thought they were seeing star wars and instead they bought tickets to this <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much pretty much pete's dragon made 35 million dollars that year Oh, I loved that movie as a kid. Annie Hall came out that year and it made $38 million. Yes, it did. Oh, I didn't realize Austin Powers, the spy who, oh, spy who loved me. Spy who loved me. No, you loved Oh, yeah. Loved. Not uh, $46 million. Obviously, I can go into some of the other notables, but number one that year was obviously Star Wars. Number two was Smokey and the Bandit. Number three was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Number four was Saturday Night Fever. You got to say it, Fever, otherwise you're saying it wrong. And number five was, and I'm sure my parents know this movie, A Bridge Too Far. Oh, The Deep is on there, too, at number six. I didn't realize porn made that much money in the uh, 70s. You're thinking Deep Throat. Oh, man, I'm just off it tonight, aren't I? You are. Wow, but, yeah. Josh. <laughs> But uh, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo made $28 million. But like I said, there's really nothing in the box office for this movie. Herbie. I could keep going down this list. So, Herbie yeah, was, Goes to Monte Carlo. Are those, Carlo those the Love Bug movies? Those? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Her, Herbie the Love Bug? Yes. I hate And he movies. goes to Monte Carlo, so that's like the 17th one they made that year. Yeah, I hate every one of those movies. Every Except the one with one Lindsay one. Lohan, right? Uh, No. 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 Oh, hey, the Bad News Bears and Breaking Training made nineteen million. That would be Breaking the sequel. No, no. no, that's the sequel to the Bad News Bears, and it was a sequel nobody wanted. There's a reason why sequels were poison, pretty much until Godfather Two and Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah. But that's all I got for box office, there, Thompson. So uh, I am now curious about your metadata. Well, so. it's a bit of curiosity with this metadata too, and it's not really going to be. <sighs> comforting so the greatest tagline the story of a legend that took the world by storm summary muhammad ali stars as himself in this dramatized version of his life story up to the late 1970s it includes his olympic triumphs as cassius clay his conversion to islam his refusal of the army draft the legal battle after being stripped of his world title and his regaining of the heavyweight crown from George Foreman in their famous Rumble in the Jungle fight in 1974. This is interesting. Um, What we can expect... um, Well, has a biopic ever worked when the subject played themselves? No. Yeah, there we go. This this is actually based on the book, uh, The Greatest... My Own Story, which was debatably written by Muhammad Ali, as well as Herbert Muhammad, Ali's manager, and Richard Durham, um, a Pulitzer Prize winning author who actually did probably do the writing. It's shaky whether Ali was actually involved in writing it, but we do know Herbert Muhammad, Ali's manager, had some major editorial control over what was and was not included uh, up to including making himself be a much bigger deal in uh, Ali's rise to fame. This movie was produced by John Marshall who had only had one production credit to his name before this, The Experience which was a documentary about Jimi Hendrix. So already we got someone who knows at least a little bit of something about making films about famous people. The only difference is Jimi Hendrix was dead when he did it the first time. Now he had to deal with Ali. This was directed by Tom Grease, who almost exclusively had TV series in his career. Mission Impossible, The Man from U.N.C.L.E., Batman. Sadly, this was also the last film he ever made. Uh, He died four months before the movie was released in 1977. But he's got kind of a grounded style, which would probably work for this. Screenplay was done by Ring Lardner Jr., which is reassuring because he's had a mix of crime dramas and comedies. 
Um, the Cincinnati Kid, a drama with Steve McQueen, and Semi Tough, a comedy with Burt Reynolds being um, two of them, and MASH. So the guy knows how to write a story, but the cast is where it gets interesting, and this is what's going to lead into my what we can expect from this film. First off, you have Muhammad Ali as himself, and interestingly enough, he has an IMDb page, guys, but I think a lot of it is someone fucking around because a lot of them were Pakistani films, and I double-checked, and I think either he was playing on a TV somewhere or something, but that doesn't count, but the rest... It's a mix. There aren't a lot of all stars in this film. And the ones that they did get were doing other projects at the same time as this. Hmm. Like James Earl Jones, who plays Malcolm X. We know him from Swashbuckler. 77 was a busy year for him. He was in seven films and made for TV miniseries movies at the same time. Exorcist 2, Star Wars, Jesus of Nazareth. So, Oh my God, I forgot he's in Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. I don't expect he's going to be in this movie for very long. Ernest Borgnine, too. Uh, he plays Angelo Dundee, who is supposed to be Ali's trainer and corner man. For those that know the podcast, we loved him in Flight of the Phoenix. Kind of an everyman actor, does a bit of everything. He was also in Jesus of Nazareth at the same time, as well in a TV series called Future Cop. Going on down the line, Robert Duvall as Bill McDonald, also in several other things at the same time. All the people who are big names that they got to play supposedly important roles, not a lot of playtime. But for people like uh, Herbert Muhammad, they got Lloyd Haynes to play him. And his only thing was bit parts in TV shows like Star Trek and Batman. So I'm thinking what's happening here. Muhammad Ali is not an actor is what I'm trying to get at. If you have big named actors like James Earl Jones and Ernest Borgnine starring next to him constantly, it's going to emphasize that he does not know how to act. So that's probably why if there was going to be someone who's going to interact with him a lot, they got someone who maybe had a few credits and some talent, but not enough to really overshadow him. That's what Honestly, I think. it's probably more like they got the big name actors to put on the title card so they can uh, try to draw people to it because they're not expecting Muhammad Ali to be a draw to movie theaters. That's very much a possibility. It's a po big possibility. And also think I'm thinking maybe budget wise too. It's like we can only afford James Earl Jones for five minutes, guys. I'm already expecting them to crusty the clown this, so... <laughs> oh my god, you're probably not wrong. Uh, but aside from that, there's not much else going on for this. There was no drama on set. There were no awards except for The Greatest Love of All, which Whitney Houston wound up winning 10 years later. So what I'm thinking is this is going to be pretty much along the same line as Purple Rain with Prince. It's just a vanity project. He was seeing that Rocky was getting some love. It's like but I'm a boxer. Why don't you make a movie about me? I'm totally better than Rocky. And um, I don't know how you guys feel about Purple Rain, but oof, that. I've it. not seen it in 20 some odd years. No, I watched it back when Prince passed away. I, I did. I, I watched it because it was on TV, but um, it's, you're right, Tom. It's a, it's a complete vanity project. It's, it's not anything to write home about. In fact, it's, it's kind of, I likened it to a two hour music video. <laughs> well, it's, this is going to be Purple Rain minus the music plus fighting. So I don't know how you guys are going to feel about that. So, Josh, how are you going to feel about that? What are your expectations for this movie? Hated it. Wait, what? <laughs> this movie. We haven't even watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Grumpy Josh has already come out. We haven't even hit the play button yet. <laughs> oh, God, it's going to be one of those nights. <laughs> now, I am, uh, uh, honestly, I'm a fan of Muhammad Ali. I really like his, uh, I like watching some of the like old videos of him. Ali, the movie with Will Smith, definitely contributed to that. Honestly, I was only recently introduced to that movie. The movie came out, what, 2001? Yes. But it isn't the first time I'd seen the uh, you know dramatization of the story of uh, Muhammad Ali. But uh, I'm honestly interested to see this take on it. And my expectations are not very high. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be a very good film. I'm definitely anxious to see uh, a young James Earl Jones again. Um, all the shit that we give Swashbuckler, I thought that uh, he was one of the standout performances in that movie. Mm -hmm. 
despite his Jamaican me crazy accent. <laughs> um, that the director eventually told him to stop doing. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, like, I don't have high expectations. I think if I come out of this movie and I'm just like, well, that wasn't the worst movie I ever saw. It will have met expectations. So, um, yeah, I really don't have much more to say about it because legitimately I like boxing films. I just don't know how much of boxing is going to be in this film because, you know, you think there's going to be a lot, but there probably won't be because there's a lot more to Muhammad Ali than just boxing. But uh, that's all I've got. What about you, Thompson? Uh, well, I'm expecting this film is going to be on long, uh, at the level of quality of a made for TV slash straight to video sort of movie um looking online it looks like uh the majority of the fights are just going to be news clips and videos from his classic fights i don't expect he's going to do a lot of on-screen fighting but i could be wrong we're definitely going to get some good performances i i guess one or two scenes uh, with ernest borgnine actually made him cry but i'll be surprised if I like this film. It might just be a middle of the road. It might, but I'm not expecting anything good. We, the fact that we find nothing in terms of box office, nothing in terms of trivia. No one remembers this film, probably not even the people who were in it. It's a launch. It's going to be a laundry folder at best and <laughs> a swashbuckler at worst. And Nigel, what about your expectations? I'm expecting by the end of tonight, <clears throat> we're going to have another like six or seven journeys before you're allowed to win another one. <laughs> like trying to find trivia, trying to find anything about this movie this week. And I know I had a busy week, but still trying to try to find anything in this movie and finding nothing. And including one of the reviews that I found on IMDb was Muhammad Ali can't play Muhammad Ali. I'm like, oh, oh God. God, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so but you know i'm I, I i'm not really expecting much out of this film i didn't even know this film existed until you presented it uh, uh last week so i really don't know what's what's gonna go down with this um muhammad ali's not an actor outside of the audie murphy movie to helen back which is about audie murphy and he played himself but Audie Murphy was an actor before he became a soldier and then he became an actor again. But outside of the movie to hell and back with Audie Murphy, I've not seen too many historical biopics where the, the person that's being portrayed or is the person that's being shown is played by himself or herself. And it's any good. So yeah, because obviously they don't, they don't want to show themselves in a negative light. So they tend to gloss over any of the flaws they may have had. And uh, they don't, they're not usually accurate to themselves because they want to portray, because it, it is just human nature. You want to portray the best version of yourself. So mm. yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting much out of this movie. I, I don't think it's going to be that good. I really don't. Yeah. No. Let's just be honest with ourselves. The best biopic that will ever be made will be the Tom Hanks biopic played by Tom Hanks. It might be another to Helen Beck because that, that movie's really good. Audie Murphy plays himself and it's a really good film. <laughs> Wait, Wait, where were you going with the Tom Hanks thing, Josh? What? Well, it was supposed to be a joke, but Dan just, you know, ruined it. Oh. Were you talking about the Mr. Rogers movie? Because I don't know. Well, no, that, that was a uh, biography on Fred Rogers. No, I'm saying the best biographic film ever made will be the Tom Hanks biography played by Tom Hanks. You know, and I then Dan took it and he's like, no, this is bad. No, I didn't. I said this might be bad. I didn't say Tom Hanks would be bad. No, no, no. Just you just, just you, didn't, you didn't have the Dan reaction I was hoping for. It's okay though. Dan, wow, we can't rem you. we can't remember dates, we can't do math. Wow. <laughs> yeah, guys. we're just real. I'm telling you we peaked. <laughs> I think we did. We once we did Empire Strikes Back, now we're just phoning it in. It's like, don't you know yeah. who I am? <laughs> Like we let Tom pick the list. Jeez, what is wrong with us? Well, we'll learn our lesson tonight, and um, if we'll just go another six, seven journeys and not let him win again, <laughs> and then we'll let him win again, and we'll be reminded the cycle will repeat. Yeah, yeah. To all of our new listeners who uh, came on after listening to our Empire episode and still stayed on after our selection section, after you uh, finish this last episode of ours, um, it will get better. I promise. <laughs> 
narrator, it didn't get better. And they hated every minute of it. We loved it while you were here. <laughs> but speaking of learning lessons and hating every minute of it, Dan, I wonder, did anyone have any opinions about this movie that we would help us uh, know what we're getting into? Oh, yeah. I even told you. One of the IMD reviews says Muhammad Ali can't play Muhammad Ali. Hmm. And I, then I, got see, to th- I got to thinking. Oh, God. Oh, see, shoot. I My memory's been so bad today. I might need to be quizzed on this so I can, like, keep my mind fresh. Okay. So, anyways, I'm going to read some IMDb reviews. And if you guys can, t- one of you guys can tell me the uh, score, who's ever closest gets the point. If you get it right on the money, you get two points. We're going to do six of these. So. Five and a bonus just in case we all tie. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then uh, if we get even distance apart on one, we both get the point. No, we're we can't not pick the same number. No, you can't pick the same number. I'm not doing even distance. Oh, yeah. Even distance. You both get a point. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not bad. We've canceled. Although, the although, past, although but... uh, I think it was Wink from Shattered Order to make a good point. Actual Price is Right rules. Who is who's ever the closest without going over. So if it's a five star review and you guess three and Tom says six, technically you win. So I like that rule. I like that. And it was GMP who said that. Was it GMP? Well, I know one of them said that the actual price, and they are right. Actual price is right rule is whoever is the closest without going over. So, yes. That's an interesting twist. We want to play that that twist on this journey? Well, if it's, like I said, if it's a five-star review and you say four and Tom says six, technically that would be you get the point. Okay. Because- so for the even number apart, we'll play the, the that level of price is right rules. Whoever gets closest without going over, only for the even distance apart. Okay, so the it's a five star, okay, so if it's a five-star review and you say two and Tom says seven, then yeah, it's the because that's two apart, right? That would be even distance apart. But if he said five... And it was a four, but I said a one. He would get it because he's still closer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, okay. I'm, follow, I'm following you. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like you just come in and first person say one wins every time. Okay. Mm. It only goes whoever goes under it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If uh, it's even distance apart. Okay. I like All right. That's, rules. yeah. All right. That's like- another level of strategy to it because then that means it's like, do I prices right him at this point type thing? I mean, that would give you incentive to go under instead yeah, of. Yeah. Yeah. That way, when the first person says it's a seven star review, you're not automatically thinking, well, I'm going to say eight or I'm going to yeah. say six. You might say three. So, all right. Well, let me get my scorecard out. I don't need one for me anymore because I keep getting shut out in these damn things. Well, that was the last journey. I mean, we might see something different. We yeah. thought I thought I was back on track, and then the Shattered Order guys came on, and I'm like, well, I'm the only one from my own podcast that didn't score a point. Awesome. <laughs> that was just beautiful symmetry. Come on. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. I couldn't have scripted it better myself. Okay. So All right, I need to channel my inner wink. Wink, be with me. <laughs> All right. Stop touching yourself. All right. So we will start with uh Tom I made God cry. Now we're definitely starting with Tom. <laughs> okay. All right, Tom. The title of this review, Rope a Dope. Oh shit! This one could go either way. Uh, no, I'm gonna say six. Uh, Rope a Doped. I legitimately think this is a lower review, so I'm gonna try to play into this new rule. I'm gonna say four it's a five so josh gets the point because he's the Boom. closest without going over damn it damn it damn it i hate this Andrew, new rule already <laughs> no don't be happy because if i would have prices righted you and gone five i would have got two points fair point fair point damn i was close though i got a six i was one away mm, i was legitimately thinking it was lower than a five though but hey go me one point to josh all right josh next question is to you then this movie depicts the fighter, Muhammad Ali, as a truly unique individual. Any punctuation on there? There's a comma. <laughs> <laughs> but is it used in the right way? It actually is. So I, I will say is it, it is. Is that not even a period at the end? No, it's just there's a pause. The, the, there's the, Right after the word fighter. And then it, it says, so this movie depicts the fighter, comma, Muhammad Ali as a truly unique individual. But there's no period at the end of that. So he almost had a sentence. He almost had a correct sentence. But yes, there's no other punctuation. Um, I'm going to go three. I'm going to go six again. It's a five. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Wait, since I'm closest, though. Yeah, you're yeah, closest. Tom gets the point. Tom gets the point. <laughs> 
It's only if you guys are within one of it. So yeah, if, if, if Josh had said four there. again, if Josh had said four again, then he would have got it again. Okay. That's two fives in a row. Nigel's mixing it up tonight. Yeah. No, was... honestly, this is mostly the IMDb reviews. Oh, no. Remember, remember guys, it has a six out of ten on IMDb. I'm not going to find hardly any ten stars. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Tom? The yeah. title is, and it's actually, I think it's a quote from Muhammad Ali. Never been a fighter with such a pretty face. These are not helping me at all. Son of a monkey. Never, never been, a, been a fighter with such a pretty face. There's, As in, there's never been a fighter as good looking as me. Yeah. That was, uh, Ali trash talked all the time. I'm going to say seven on this one. Uh, let's see, Tom says seven. Uh, Josh is going to say six. And Tom takes a commanding lead. It Ooh. is a seven star review. Thank Ooh. God I didn't go eight. I was initially thinking it was eight, but I went one lower. Ooh. Float like a butterfly. All right. Josh, raging dull. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Raging dull. Um, raging dull. Let's go four out of ten. Hmm. I'm going to say two. Josh ties it up. It's a four star review. <laughs> Damn. This is neck and neck tonight. It is. It actually might go to the sixth question tonight. Oof. Four star. Damn it. All right. Last question. If I can get it. Yeah, if, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Actually, is this the last one? Yeah, this is one, fifth two, question. Three, yep. Yep. Yeah, this is the fifth one. So, yeah, okay. Shit, I had a good one, too. Where is it at? Six out of ten. <laughs> and Josh wins trivia! <laughs> Ali was a great talker. He shouldn't be reading from a script. <laughs> Tom, that one's directed at you. I shouldn't be reading. Yeah, Ali was a great talker, but he shouldn't be reading from a script. Oh, I want to say one star. Tom says one star. Um, Josh is going to play it safe and say two. <laughs> well, Josh is the closest. It's a five star review. <laughs> really? That's a five star? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only one star I had was the, it would have been so obvious where it says Ali can't play Ali. That was the only one star. So honestly, there's that's the only one in the whole bunch, but most of it's middling reviews. It was almost all five, sixes, fours. There's a one, two, and no tens at all. Wow. Well, at least it was a close one. Yeah, that was definitely a close one. I kind of like these new um, rules we've implemented, even though they screwed me over. <laughs> it adds a level of strategery. <laughs> It does. Big ups to the Shattered Order guys for uh, coming up with that or reminding us of what the actual Price is Right rules are. So, yes. I yes. haven't seen the Price is Right since 1993 when I was homesick from school. Drew yeah. Carey hosts it now. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. I mm. knew that. But I have not seen anything but clips from that movie when he hosts. Yeah, it's near not missing much. Well, Josh, well done, sir. I raise my boxing glove to you. Good fight. Ding, ding. Yes. So I get to do trivia next week for The Natural. I hope I remember to uh, do it before five minutes before the podcast. <laughs> You're asking a lot from yourself there, Josh. I am. But you know what's not asking a lot? What's that? Asking Tom, play the music. Keep your head up! Come on! Punch like you mean it! My grandmother can hit harder than that and she ain't even got arms! Ah, and welcome back to another greatest episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and boxing trainer, Tom. And if you want to beat the champ, you gotta mean it. Otherwise, you'll never be ready for the big fight in... Four months? Hell, that's plenty of time. Pick up a seat, kid. But thank you for taking the time to train with us here at the Fire Pit. We're learning the ropes with the team as the Fire Pit strikes out their first film of the journey, The Greatest. There are a lot of bases to cover if we want to get to 42, but do they have what it takes to go all the way? I guess we'll find out. In the meantime, let's find out how the team is handling their own in-ring experiences. Oh shit! 
Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! Don't get brain damage. All right, so Dan, hypothetical question for you. Yeah, fire away. What if uh, Tony Stark was a stripper? Wait, so like he grew up and became a stripper? Yeah, dif- different uh, upbringing, something about his dad, I don't know, whatever. D- th- you'd have to change his entire backstory. But would he still become Iron Man? What? No, he became Iron Man because of the impossible situation he was in. Also, he was like super smart. You guys, seriously, you shouldn't be up on the, the roof! Stop! Separate! But, but that's what I'm asking. Like, was it the situation that made him Iron Man, or was he always Iron Man? No, that would be like asking if Superman would still be Superman if he wasn't from Krypton. No, 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 no. It's, it's more of, is he Iron Man without the suit? <laughs> Why are you not stopping this fight? Hey, you're doing great, you're doing great. Um, using your head to block his punches is a bold strategy. I would recommend against it, though. Fantastic job. Keep it up. I'm sure there won't be any lasting repercussions from this fight. Now get out there and pound his ass. Bad choice of one! Round two! Okay, so, well, that was what Iron Man 3 was about. No, Iron Man 3 sucked. This is different. Yeah, so, like, he was Iron Man, but he decided to become a stripper? Get off Matt! going! Get towel! Throw! Help! We did! So wait, you're, you're saying that the ar- events of Iron Man 1 and 2 happened, and then he became a stripper? What? No, no, I'm clarifying your question. By making it more complicated. Oh. Seriously! Anytime! God damn it, Tom, stop the interruption! Ah! Oh shit. Shuriken! Oh, I did it! I did it! Oh shit. Guys? Guys? You alright? Hello? Mm-hmm. No, mommy, I want to wear my big boy pants today. Are, uh, are they okay? Uh, maybe. Um, Josh? Josh? What's the quadratic equation? I, I want to buy a Fubaru and make it pretty for the show. Yeah, let's get back to the hospital, guys. Ah, the fix is in, I tells ya. The fix is in. Ah. But if you want us to fix it that people hear about your podcasts, or if you found a flaw in our opinions that you want to fix, or if you're just fixing to get something off your chest, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line, as well as the reason for your email. Whether it's for an ad, to recommend a list, let us know about something we got wrong about a past movie, future destinations you'd like us to try and reach, and toss it on over. Of course, from there, we'll read it. Read it. Try reading it again. Try really hard to finish reading it? And never respond. We've taken a lot of headshots over the years, people. Thinking might not be so good our thinking is. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com Alright, well that bell means they're just about done watching the movie. Y'all head on back into the episode. I gotta get these marshmallows whipped into shape. Thank y'all for listening, and, as always, good luck. Grandma! Go easy on the kid! I said break him in, not break him! You do this every time! Ugh! And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. All we got is a really soggy piano riff. I'm already bored. I believe that you what? <laughs> what? It's just some song you use to start your Muhammad Ali movie. So they're telling his friend to stay outside, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And kind and quietly implying that if he wants to stay outside too, that'd probably be for the best. This is racism, the movie. <laughs> This feels like a 70s movie that was made before Star Wars. 
How much of um of uh, Muhammad Ali's um, dialogue do you think is him just making things up because he didn't actually read the script? I would say it's in the neighborhood of 100%. <laughs> is he sweating through his shirt? Yes. I thought global warming didn't become a thing until the 90s. It's still the 70s. It's still hot out. Yeah, this is like the South. No, uh, is it? And now the shirt's dry. Wow. <laughs> wow. Consistency. Dear God. Oh, wait. Well, the heavyweight oh. boxing champ of the world drew a gun in a casino. It's a, oh God. <laughs> the 70s. <laughs> wow. What a time to be alive. Holy shit. Leroy Jenkins. That's a little piece of internet history for you. For those listening, Leroy Jenkins is a meme from like 2002, 2003. Look it up. And also, um, Alabama Hot Pocket. Look that up. Nope. Nope. Hold on. Alabama. Oh, my nope. God. <laughs> I warned you. Hold on. Let me open up incognito mode first. Zip. Fap, 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 fap. Dan. Dan. Dan, you're, you're, you're not muted. Dan, you're not. not... <sighs> oh, good. He's writing his own sexual fantasies into the script. This is amazing. Tom's no longer allowed to pick lists. There needs to be a vetting process. <laughs> the greatest, the car. The greatest, the lunchbox. The greatest, the flamethrower. Get your Muhammad Ali action figure. You can get all of these now. Wherever toys are sold. Batteries not included. So wait, wait, wait. Again, you play this song. He's getting ready for the biggest fight of his career at this time. And this is the song? Like, come on. I know Rocky's completely fictional, but, like, he ain't gonna fly now, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> come on, let's just do this. <laughs> hey, it's the detective from In the Heat of the Night. It's the heat of the mm-hmm. moment. No, not that song. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh my god, this movie. We are oh 20... god, it's like, what is going on? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, oh my god. Like, from what? scene to scene, it's like, is this a sketch comedy show? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Muhammad Ali Variety Hour, starring Cassius Clay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adding the laugh track. <laughs> <laughs> and on to the next skit. <laughs> Live from New York, it's Saturday night. What's amazing is when they go to the fights, Muhammad Ali looks younger. It's kind of weird. And skinnier, too. Black don't crack. But brown gets round. <laughs> Shut up. Sad Price is Right sound noise. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. I thought they were going to go back and do the, another step forward thing. They just cut to the courtroom scene. Mm-hmm. Can they just? Can we just cut to the ending of this film? Yeah, we can just click this button right here and it takes us right to the credits. Would it be bad to do this? Just, I want to do that, but I feel like it would impugn the integrity of this podcast. Nah, we got all the way to the end of Swashbuckler and Pathfinder. We can get to the end of this. That's what I'm saying. I just, yeah. It's fucking... Ugh. Oh, come on, Josh. How much time left? 40, 40 minutes. Oh, my God. Wait. What? Is, there an, is this an exorcism going on? What the hell's oh, going on? The exorcist was made a couple years earlier, so they're trying to uh, blend. <laughs> the producer genre. says there has to be an exorcism scene in the movie. Oh, they didn't totally steal this from Rocky either. I love this off-brand gonna fly now, too. Man, he put on a few pounds. <laughs> Again, those body blows, man. It's just bruises under there. It's just him sitting down, the skin folds. Ah, that, yeah, that too, yeah. The sitting down adds 15 pounds. And 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Please, just roll credits. Just roll credits. Don't explain anything. Just roll credits. Oh, thank, thank you. Jesus. Oh. Dan, do you want to tell the story about that one time for Tom's birthday, the movie he got to pick? Oh, my God. That was like the best ever. So Tom decides for his birthday he wanted to go out with some friends to see a couple of art house films and go to a bar. Well, long story short, I couldn't make it because uh, at the time I well, I didn't have the money. I'll be honest. I didn't have the money to go and I didn't want my friends paying for me. So I said I can't go. 
And but Josh went and with some other friends. Well, I get a text from Josh later on in the night, and Josh says, I'm watching an Israeli movie with Hebrew subtitles. I kind of understand why you had a thing. The movie wasn't that <laughs> bad though. No, it was interesting. We laughed. Yeah, the story's not over yet, Tom. <laughs> And talk about the second text when yep, yep. he said that the Israeli movie now has full frontal male nudity. And now you understand why I was queen quotes broke. <laughs> but you're missing the last text that I sent you. Tom's no longer allowed to pick movies. That's right. Yes. I remember that way. Yeah. Tom's no longer allowed to pick. Yeah. It was after the movie was over and you guys were going to the bar. You're like, Tom's no longer allowed to pick movies. <laughs> and we forget that lesson every few months. Tom is like my long John Silvers. <laughs> I think Long John Silver's sounds good. I'm like... Then I order Long John Silver's. I, I go to Long John Silver's. I eat it. I am sick for like a week. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm never eating at Long John Silver's again. And then two years pass. And I drive past the Long John Silver's. And I'm like, Long John Silver sounds good. And the cycle repeats itself. But you enjoy yourself at the time when you're there. I really don't. I like the movie, gosh darn it. I, I don't really like to think that I'm thankful that people are dead, but I'm really glad Muhammad Ali is dead so he can't hear this and then come find us. <laughs> and now, back to the episode. That is such an awkward ending. But then again, it's par for the course with this whole movie. Dude, that ending was as awkward as that movie. Yeah, it would have surprised me if it was any other movie, but it doesn't surprise me because it's this movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like you would think, if that was your final thing, you're going to end the movie, you would have some build-up to the goddamn fight. Yeah. Poor Dom Grease. We are so sorry. This movie was so bad, he died before it came out so he wouldn't have to watch it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I was going to say, I feel bad for the guy because this movie was dedicated to him. <laughs> this is what he went out on. Yeah, this is your legacy, dude. I want to dedicate my latest shit to this to this guy because I hate him. <laughs> what they don't tell you is he died while editing this. He saw the final cut. It's just like, I'm done. Dead. 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 All right, Nigel. Well, that was a movie. So, that was a movie. Uh, it was definitely a movie. Or <laughs> several movies pieced together. But uh, we'll get more onto that later. I think right now, um, Nigel, what... Uh, what are your final thoughts on this gem? Well, I will certainly say that out of all of the movies we've seen on this podcast, that was certainly one of them. This movie is just oddly paced. It's made with the assumption that you already know everything there is to know about Ali's career, or you've already been following it before this movie came out, which would have been fine in 1977 when this was only like three or four years removed from his fight with Foreman, which I believe was in 73 or 74. But uh, unfortunately... For those of us living in 2021 who did not grow up watching Ali in his prime, this serves no purpose. There's no buildup towards any of the big moments in, in his career. The loss to Frazier, his very first world championship, his conversion to Islam, his defiance of the uh, of the draft, which also coincided with his conversion to Islam. The fight with Foreman. They show those moments in the movie like him going you know him not going in the draft and him converting to islam and his first championship they show those moments but they almost treat them like footnotes they treat them like then this happened then this happened then this happened then this happened you know what this movie feels like this movie to me feels like a senior in high school presentation on muhammad ali <laughs> this movie feels like someone getting up in front of his class and showing the highlights of Muhammad Ali's career, but not really going in depth as to why that was exactly a highlight. Oh, but then like also like peppering in the scenes between it to explain the, explain the rest. And he's like super proud of it, but he looks nothing like Muhammad Ali and he's white. <laughs> <laughs> kind, kind of. Yes. It just, it just feels like it's not a complete story. They show the moments, but they don't explain why they were a big deal. The Will Smith movie does a much better job of building up towards the big moments in Muhammad Ali's life, you know, and I've, looked up some stuff about it. Uh, this movie was basically a response to Rocky. Rocky comes out in 76, wins awards, gets a lot of praise, makes buckets of money. And Muhammad Ali was like, why are they making movies about this fake boxer who doesn't even win and everyone loves him? They need to make a movie about me. I'm the best boxer of all time. And I actually won. And so they make this vanity project. Unfortunately, they forgot to do anything else with that idea. So, oh, or he just surrounded himself with yes men that wouldn't tell Ali no. 
but it was definitely a response to Rocky trying to cash in on some of that quote unquote boxing money. But um, I don't know. It just it feels like an incomplete film. And the only other thought I'm going to have before I kick things over to Tom were the music is just all over the place in this movie. It, it hardly fits any scene that it's in. And it definitely further confirms my belief that a movie is only half as good as its score. If it's just not scored right, it's even worse than it was. Mm-hmm. So it got um, better when they got to diet caffeine free going to fly now. But yeah, yeah. When they started doing that, when they when they started trying to copy Rocky it was a much better film. But uh, um, yeah, I'm going to stick with Rocky as my go to boxing movies um, or the uh, Will Smith Ali. If I want to watch a movie about Muhammad Ali, no offense okay. to the late Muhammad Ali, but yeah. Tom, what about you, man? All right. I agree with every sentiment you just made there, Nigel. Um, there's a dichotomy between this film and Slipstream. And where I see what they wanted to do with this film. I see the good film that this could have been. The only difference between them is uh, competence and charm. Well, a little bit of charm. Both films were bad, but at least Slipstream was interesting bad. It comes down to editing. Um There's a quote, I can't remember who says it. It is the job of the editor to find the movie between the cuts. And I don't know if it's because Byron Brandt, who edited this film, didn't quite know what to do or if he was was being hamstringed by either Ali or the studio themselves. But it just feels like the point of the movie was not so much Ali's struggle to become the greatest boxer but his struggle against racism as in like he's the greatest fighter but his real fight was against the system and you saw that in the beginning parts of it you saw it peppered throughout like his treatment by his former handlers when he's in the restaurant i mean the scene where he's just like going to you know flirt with that chick who's running on the bicycle and he passes the white water fountain as she goes to the black water fountain it felt like that was supposed to be the story and that's why you saw all these like this cutting to these moments of fighting because it's like well we can't have an ali movie without ali fighting yeah who wants to see ali dealing with bad cops in the south that could be interesting stuff but we need to see him punch we need to see him air quotes flirt with women and again, I don't know if that was from Ali himself or the studio. I'm suspecting it could be both because you can't have an Ali film and not have Ali fight. So that's where I think it went wrong. That's a good point. That That is a good point. Yeah. Because those moments could have been interesting in right hands. And if Ali wasn't in it. Yeah. And he's yeah. The, the My thought is Ali should not have been in this film. He was too big for them to film around. Yeah. And that killed everything. I'll give the actors around them credit. They did a good job, but Buzz just couldn't do it. Uh, The director couldn't do it. It's that no one could do it. Josh, what about you? What are your thoughts? Hated it. (laughs) (laughs) And we mean it this time, too. Yes. (laughs) Hey, we agree with Josh. (laughs) I will honestly say the people who made this film really should have watched Ali to get a good idea of how to make a good Muhammad Ali movie. 30, 30 years after this movie came they out. They should have waited 30 years, watched that movie, and then made this movie. That's the only advice I've got to them. This movie was terrible. Like, I agree with you, Tom. You could tell that there was things in there that they wanted to touch on, but I made the joke that it seemed like somebody was running with the script, got tripped by the jock, you know, it was he was tripped by Muhammad Ali because he was a nerd with glasses. And then uh, the script went flying and he's scrambling and trying to find it. And then what he collected, he runs, and puts it on the table, and that's what they filmed. But the movie felt so disjointed, discombobulated. Another word for separated. It's just like it would jump from scene to scene without any kind of connection. It was like, like I jokingly said, it felt like a sketch comedy show because it's like you would have one scene with one serious moment jump to another scene with another serious moment that were completely unrelated it was just go boom 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 just like that like you said there's no dramatic effect in this film whatsoever the ali movie in 2001 it did a really good job of kind of humanizing muhammad ali you know showing us his faults and his uh strengths this movie did none of that but I fully agree with what you guys were saying. It's just like, you could tell it's just nobody wanted to get 
punched by the champ or you know say no to the champ but it's just it was bad it was just yeah. really mm-hmm. bad and then like the ending didn't surprise me at all it literally went from them showing footage of the george foreman fight george foreman falls down cut to wish gonna fly now credits and i was just like please show the uh credits it did and it was a terrible terrible transition that would be terrible in any other movie but it made sense for this movie. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. Like, it was a mercy in this movie. Yeah, like that ending would have disappointed me if it was any other film. But because it was this film, it was kind of like, eh, it's, this is par for the course. This is right where I think it should be. Uh, I, I have to agree with you though, Tom. I think that you're right. It it did kind of feel like this movie wanted to deal with Ali's fight with racism in the country at the time. Because he was a big civil rights activist. And when he retired from boxing and left boxing, he still actively campaigned for civil rights, uh, equality. He also campaigned for uh, religious equality in the sense of like, you know, he didn't want to demonize or vilify Muslims. He was big into that, and especially late in his career when he was not so much a boxer anymore. But he was more of an activist. So I think maybe that's why they did. They wanted to do some of that in this movie because this movie was made. I think in the twilight of his career when he started to transition from being an active athlete to an activist. So they wanted to touch on that more, but they still treated that like footnotes too, though. They still treated a lot of that like footnotes. Yeah, which is frustrating. It's incredibly frustrating. Yeah, I mean, like, I understand not wanting to talk about how he was basically cheating on all of his wives with his next wife. Yeah, but pretty much. Like When I, he wasn't like, beating them, holy yeah. shit. I, honestly, I am... One thing I will give this movie that I do, re, re, do give a little respect for is even though that he was in it, he was willing to show some of his negative aspects, you know? Mm-hmm. Like him picking up a hooker, him uh, basically abusing his wife, him losing those fights. So I, I do give him some credit that it wasn't... Like, it was obviously a vanity project, Dan. Like, 100%. Mm-hmm. But I do like that they did at least give us a glimpse at the darker moments in his life. Mm-hmm. And and he was ha- willing to relive that, you know, like he had to walk, do the walk of shame after he lost the fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but I will it, give this movie that. But in, in better hands, with a better actor, you could have felt sympathy for him. But I felt no sympathy. Nothing. It's like, he's not a flawed character. He's just a dumbass and a brute. A yeah. badly written character. Yeah. It's like it's I said, like, they did it much better in Ali. They did, they humanized him. They added the level of drama that was necessary to make it engaging. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's, I made the analysis in the beginning that the reason they had these big stars around Ali, but they didn't have them in it much, was it would have just illustrated how poor his acting skills were. I'm not so sure about that, but I'm glad that they were not with him a lot because it would have, especially like that scene where his, I think, second or third wife was having that major breakdown and just was pouring out like, I don't want to see you beat. Just her acting was really good. And his response was so wooden. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, I, yeah, we point, I pointed that out. It's just like, she's doing a great job. He's mm. not. Yes. And that's why every other scene where he's talking, it's like everyone's just listening as he talks, because otherwise it would just illustrate it. And that's why the good actors like Borgnine and them were off to the side. Or Ali was just listening, like with James Earl Jones, who is only in this film for two minutes. Really? Yes. Yes. So what was the final tally for Ernest Borgnine? Because James Earl Jones was two minutes? Yeah, I'm, I'm... Clocking him in about eight to nine minutes. I'm terrible at math, but just looking at the times I have here, it's about nine minutes. Uh, Duvall was in it for about two minutes. Uh, actually, less than two minutes. Well, he was only in two scenes, wasn't he? Yep. This is also counting Borgnine scenes where he's in it, but he's not talking. Where he's just in the background. Yeah, there was a lot of scenes where there was just like random scenes during the fights that they would cut to. That the quality of the video was completely different than the quality of the news. <laughs> right. It's just like, okay, they tried to make it grainy, but it, they did a, da- a piss poor job of that. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it really does feel like it was a just a, a side project for somebody, not so much a full length movie. Like, I don't know, just this movie is very, very odd in how you it was paced. They, didn't even, they never even touched on uh, Malcolm X's assassination. 
No, they didn't. When did that was a yeah. pretty big deal for him, wasn't it? I mean, I know they made a big deal out of it in Ali, but that was like they didn't even touch on that. Well, again, this film was about Ali punching things. Had the focus been on his fight against systematic racism in the country, they definitely would have. Yeah, because this movie basically ends in 1974 because that was his fight with Frazier. And Malcolm X was assassinated 10 years before in 1965. So mm-hmm. they don't even they didn't even touch on Malcolm X being killed. They didn't even give you a sense of time in that, in the movie either. No, not really. They made you feel like Malcolm X and the George Foreman fight were within months of each other. Yeah. Like him him being friends with Malcolm X and then the Foreman fight. Yeah. For however long, he's like talking about getting ready to fight Joe Frazier. And then all of a sudden he's like, I'm going to fight George Foreman. It's like, wait, now it's Foreman? When did this happen? Yeah. It's like, oh, by the way, yeah. um, Yeah. Frazier was beat by Foreman. He's a new guy to beat now. Moving on. I don't even think they they barely mentioned that. They just had that one scene with Frazier, I think, um, mm-hmm. talking about how he hit like really hard and was going to kill him. And, and that was just like, that's it. Who's 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 George Foreman? Like, I think everybody <laughs> then knew it's like, OK, I watched the fight three years ago. But for us now, it's like George mm-hmm. Foreman, the guy who sells grills. I got one. I cooked my burgers on it the other night. Those are good, solid grills. They are. Oh, they really are. They're like the best kitchen appliance you can buy. They are. They got me through college, man. Holy cow. Hey, George Foreman Grills, if you need somebody to advertise, we got you back. George Foreman is a real champ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, remember, but, uh, I got a question for you guys. I got a question for you guys. Um, is this movie better than the worst Rocky movie? Or vice? Or is this is the worst Rocky movie better than this movie? Yeah, no, I, I would say Rocky V is still a better film than this movie. Rocky V is a bad film, but it's at least a well put together film. And it has some entertaining moments. This movie did not. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, putting on my Tom hat, would you recommend this movie to anyone? No. No, I would not. No, I would not. No. No. I, no. Well, if only to make Rocky V seem good. Yeah, yeah. If, if, perspective. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't like Rocky V. I, I, if we ever get to that film, or four, I have a, like, rant about that one. But... <laughs> I know. Okay, well, let's maybe this way then. If you want to make any movie really good in your eyes, if you want to really enjoy a movie, watch this one first. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So if we would have watched this before watching Flash Gordon, we probably would have liked Flash Gordon. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd watch Flash Gordon again before this <laughs> film. Right. Yeah, same here. Like I said, this, yeah, I would not say this is better than the worst Rocky film, which in my opinion is five. So no, no. Well, that's just stating fact. Yeah, I would say this would be a candidate for a remake, but they did that. It was called Ali. It had Will Smith, and it was excellent. And it was 20 years ago. Yeah. And Damn. God damn it, it was. Still a better film. Still a better film. Uh, but that's all my thoughts. I mean, we've... I think we've, we've covered it. Yeah, we're down on the mat. The ref is doing the count. Yeah, we've, uh, we've beaten the greatest. <laughs> We went the distance. Yeah, I would say we <laughs> went the film. distance with it, but yeah. Yeah, we, we beat the greatest. In other words, we finished the film. It was difficult. Yeah. But we yeah. did it. I'll say, if you yeah. want to watch a really good boxing movie made in the 70s, watch Rocky. Yes. <laughs> or yes. Rocky 2. And if you don't like Rocky, watch this film, then Rocky. <laughs> yeah. And you'll realize why fake boxing is more entertaining than real boxing in movies. Yes. Yes. But um, I guess that does it for tonight's show. So as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google, or wherever fine podcasts are made and sold. Regular episodes are released Tuesday at 6 p.m. So please like and subscribe on whichever app you use. We really appreciate it. It helps us out. And if you leave us a review, it will help us in the ratings and the rankings. So we'll show up more. And plus, we will read it if uh, we see it. So uh, if we see that you you left a review, we'll definitely read it on the air. Mm. Yes. Like we did with the last episode, which you should go check out. But if you want to be sure to check out what else is going on, be sure to join us on our Discord channel as well. The link to the Discord channel can be found in the episode's description on our site at firepit.podbean.com. There, you'll get notifications of new episodes, be able to track the old episodes, and even better, have a fun time with fans of the show. Uh, So, yeah, pop on in. Join the conversation.
And you can also email us, mentioned back at the interspersal, uh, if you want to send us a long message, short message, happy message, sad message, mostly sad messages. It's up to you. Also, uh, like our page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at, at FirePitCCE. Both are linked in the episode's description as well. Uh, trying to get more up to date on the Twitter sphere. I'm not with it with the kids, but uh, we are posting our episodes on Twitter. Uh, we are trying to do more things on the social media to get more of you engaged in our podcast. But thank you. Yes. Um, and for shout outs, I think I would like to shout out my friend, Tim, who recently restarted listening to our episodes. He said he was driving down the road while listening to our Groundhog Day uh, episode and uh, spit out his drink when Dan said penis. <laughs> so you're welcome. My legacy lives on. Um, and I'm just going to do it because it's been, we're, we're only, at, we're a few weeks removed, but again, shout out to uh, Wink and uh, GMP from the Shattered Order podcast. You made our Empire Strikes Back episode, our most downloaded episode to date, and we really appreciate the additional promotion you guys did on your uh, Discord server to help get those numbers pumped up, to quote Matthew McConaughey. So thank you guys for that, and uh, we really appreciate it, and we can't wait to have you on again. Indeed. And from my side, I'd like to shout out two of our Facebook followers, Callan and Molden. Thank you for joining us, you amongst the many hundreds who are following us on Facebook. Uh, whether you listen to us religiously, occasionally, just something in the background, or if you're just, you know, here to see a bunch of geeks talk about geeky things, we appreciate it. Thanks for joining and helping to keep the fire pits burning. And I'd like to shout out Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Uh, thanks always for your listening and your feedback. Uh, even though there's no way he can listen to this, but uh, his family can. I would like to shout out my late uncle. He recently passed away. Um, he's a big reason why I'm so into movies that I am. He basically let me use his VHS collection as my own personal blockbuster back in the day. So a big reason why I love movies the way I do, why I watch movies the way I do, and the reason why I have a certain fondness for various films like Top Gun and Apollo 13 and Independence Day is a large part thanks to Uncle Paul. So. Rest well, Uncle Paul. Thank you very much for your, all your it inspiration. Was the one whenever you talked about the story about uh, the CD players, wasn't it? No, that would be Uncle Rob was the one with the CD player, oh, okay. but Uncle Paul was Disney. the one that had Uncle Paul had the the surround sound system and the big screen TV and get it. when a new movie would release on VHS, he'd invite us over to watch like Apollo thirteen or Independence Day or something on his new surround sound system to see if it would blow out his windows. So, yeah, well, our condolences to you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yep we uh wish the best for you and your family yeah to the Thank dan you. family um so anywho guys what what are we watching next week i don't know i mean I, i'm looking to the i'm looking out to the far the far fields here i might be calling my you shot just don't have a talent for this kind of thing do you tom he doesn't really it doesn't don't. come naturally to him no 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 i to work I, for it and then he fails most times yes. if only there was some magical way i could get good at this I imagine oh. it'll be like a lightning strike when you do figure it out, right? Yeah. Maybe then I'll be a natural. But until then, we're going to go see The Natural. <laughs> I look forward to watching that movie. Same here. Hail Hydra. I understood Hail. that reference. <laughs> but anywho, until next week, I've been Josh. I've been Tom. And I've been Dan. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. So I really think we should go back. I definitely should go back and redo my thoughts on Pathfinder. I think maybe I was a little too harsh on that film. You know, I'm inclined to agree. I still think it was brilliantly shot. And Keith Urban and Tom Clancy just really brought gravitas to their roles. And you know what? Maybe we need to give Swashbuckler another chance too. That episode, blah de blah de blah de blah. Yeah, the nuances of having a pirate who's absolutely incompetent as being a pirate has never quite been explored in cinema, and I like that about that film. Also, all of those limericks were incredibly tasteful and timeless. Also, we need to get to Rocky V. It was definitely the pinnacle of the Rocky story, and seeing Rocky as a mentor really brought him full circle as a character arc. Arnold really outdid himself on that one. Yeah, Doc. Uh, yeah, they're definitely getting worse now. Um, honest, so how long is it going to last? Oh, my God. Five weeks? That's going to be... Yeah, wait. Four, six, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one
Action sex. You know what? That actually works for me. Is there a way we can push it to six weeks? Uh, that way we could put it around our selection section? Oh, yeah. The next journey is going to be awesome. See, we're going to go. Run run us. Fatality. Yeah, Doc. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The regular room. Thanks. Be there. Be there soon.